The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. All right, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and citizens of YouTube, this is Pastor Dodd. You know, I've been having something on my heart pretty much all day long. Um, as a matter of fact, for the last two or three days. Um, you know, as I begin to think about the things that are taking place and transpiring here in America, um, how that the very fabric of our society is definitely eroding right before our very eyes. Um, I started to think about the Bible, the Bible itself, and I know just as soon as I said that, many of you people just going to sit up there and just, okay, I don't want to hear it no more, but let me tell you something. Whether you like it or not, it makes no difference. I've been on the side to where, all right, all right, I got my own religion, I got my own way, I got my own land, I, I believe what I want to believe. I, I've been there before, and it's really stupid as hell. That's what the truth is about it. Um, but now I'm on this side. I'm on this side where I'm actually filled with the genuine Holy Spirit. And so many of you who are, are um, uh, able to connect with me in the Spirit and wonder why there is a connection there is because of the passion that the Holy Spirit uses uh, this vessel right here to particularly drive the truth home to try to wake up our hard heads. But I'm amazed that we live in this particular time right here and we have this New Testament. Um, and the New Testament is true. Uh, don't get me wrong. But we have this philosophy, this other religion that is, you know, practice replacement theology called Christianity. And it's tried to, it tried to give us something other. You know, it don't mind telling us about how that the believers were martyred. You know, the Hebrews, uh, the Israelites. It never tells us about anything in there about the overcoming part. You know, when Christ was on this earth, that was a small space of time, probably about 33 years. And they're trying to make every last one of us Jesus himself. And we're not. We're disciples. And so when I think about that, you know, the, the account has been sticking in my mind more than anything. Because we're going to be forced into it, whether you like it or not. Is the account of Daniel. The established religion and the established um, government of the day they passed the law. And the law was, is that nobody could pray. Is that not what the ACLU is doing? Is that not what um, the government, the moral decline, the spiritual bankruptcy, the moral decay, or the spiritual degradation, everything that's going on here in our society, the decline of this particular world right here, we're falling right after the same Roman Empire. Are we not in a serious decline to where we don't even know right from wrong? Good from bad, um, evil from good, true from lies. It's getting even hard for people to even to discern today what it is. But I remember, now Daniel, Belchazzar, Daniel was a, a, a Hebrew of the tribe of Judah. And he was in a very high place because of his interpretation of the king. The king's dream. And the Most High gave him what the dream was. And he lifted him up to a high elevation. And you get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had a faith tried while he went establishing another government. Uh, you look at Daniel. He had his faith tried while he's in establishing the government. And even though he had opposition, it still did not stop that king from passing the law. That whenever they hear the dulcimer sound, everybody in the province, everybody in the kingdom will bow down and they will serve this image that the king has set up. Now I'm going to tell you right now, 
There's not a system or a man alive that can make Pastor Dow bow down to no damn statue. And that's the truth, and that's the true straight way. And neither could they make Daniel do it either. As a matter of fact, as soon as they passed that law, you know what Daniel did? He opened up his wonder, kind of like at the White House. That's kind of like um, um, he was in a position at the White House. He opened up his wonder. And he prayed loud in direct opposition to those wicked laws. That's what Daniel did. Remarkable, isn't it? See, we don't have the intestinal, the intestinal fortitude in this society. We don't have it. We don't have it. Um, the men have become impotent. The men, so-called men in this society, have lost all of their testicular fortitude. As a matter of fact, the women today have more testosterone than the men. They got more fight in them than the men do today. And of course, hey, what you expect? When all the men are becoming sissies. Especially those in churches. Um, but Daniel. That's a real Hebrew. And that's a real Israelite. That's the kind of spirit we need to be birthing today. No matter what laws they pass. No matter what they say. We will not bow. And I'm telling you right now. Pastor Dow. I'm only bowing to one. And that's it. And this government. And the people in this world. And any image that they form with their own hands. It ain't it. And this is the type of defibrillator we need up on our minds. Because um, we're pretty screwed up as a people. And then you got this fat pig called John Hagee down there to sold some cornerstone church. That fat abomination is sitting down there talking about. Um, Ray, can you believe he raised $60 million for the support of this Zionist Israel that's going over here um, commit genocide on the Palestinians, kind of like American is committing genocide on, on the on the Pakistanians, uh, the uh, Afghanistans, um, the Iraqis, and then next Iran, and they're already doing it on Syria, Libya, and Egypt. Man, I tell you what, I don't know what it's going to take for people to wake up. Um, but some of us will never wake up. We'll be like sheep going to the slaughter. Well. My Yah has created these hands for war because Yah is a man of war. And so I promise you one thing, let them pass all the laws they want to. Make no difference to me. I ain't bound. I ain't going to do it. And neither is the people in our camp. Nah, -uh, not the true Hebrew Israelites here straightway. Nah, -uh, and that's just the truth. Well, anyway, I'm tired and I'm sleepy and I'm going to bed. But I just thought I'd give you a little bit of something about the historical reference and the historical truth of our people. Our people, they had it. I mean, they had the real Ruach Kadesh in their hearts. They really truly did. Can you imagine Daniel <laughs> being up high in the kingdom? That would be like being in the White House today. And then President so-called Barack Hussein Obama passes the law saying, can't nobody pray. Unless they're praying to the statue. And so he sits there and watch Obama walk out to Air Force One. And he sits up and opens up a wound and he starts praying loud three times a day. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the kind of spirit I am talking about right there. And that's the truth. And that is the truth straight away. You know a lot of you people. Um, you're never going to see clearly what the truth is until you make a step of faith. Forget about your family who desires to promote lies. You're never going to see and understand what the truth is until you come out of pagan, satanic Christianity. You got to stop your sun worship, your Sunday worship. You got to stop your Christmases and your Easter's. Then your eyes and your mind will be open. Then you'll be able to see clearly. Until then, and you must keep his com commandments. You know, the question was asked, salvation, uh, rich man. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know what I mean? Hey, keep the commandments. Hey, all these are done since my youth up. Of course, what does the Greek philosophy here in the United States of America teach? Abstract viewpoints, uh, mental assent. 
If you believe it, you think it, then it's true. No, it ain't. You liars and you're on your way to a living, burning hell. And that's the truth. You better come out of that mess and that garbage. Repent for even being in it. And repent for even looking for eggs. Putting up trees. And worshiping the sun as it comes up. On some satanic Easter. Let the pagans have their holidays back. It belong to them. And that's the truth. But if you're an Israelite and you can hear my voice, you hear the call of the spirit of the bridegroom saying, come. Do you come out of her, my people? It's not easy to miss. Any preacher that promotes Sunday is a satanic, deceptive imposter. Any preacher that teaches Christmas is a liar. And he's of the father of lies and he come from the same lineage as Lucifer. Any preacher that teaches you that a rabbit lay eggs is on their way to a living burning hell and you blind people are going right along with them unless you repent and turn from your wicked ways. And that's the truth and that's the truth straightway.